So, as is the way, after a lovely mild week with temperatures almost in double figures and, um, you know, quite pleasant, we get up Saturday when I can start doing some work and of course it's four degrees. So last week there was a bit more talk about varnishing and then some of the stuff we've actually bought to help put Seahorse back together again. This week, something a bit more specific, the propeller. So that's not going to work, is it? So I don't know if you remember from the list, one of the things on the list was changing this anode on the, um, on the sail drive leg. And to do that, I've got to get the propeller off. It's a flexifold propeller. It's a Volvo sail drive leg. I don't know what type, but it's an MD2010 or something, or 2020, 10, 10, 10 horsepower engine. Um, and so I've got to take it off. I've never taken a propeller off before. I've certainly never taken this one off before. And uh, I've no idea what to do really. But how hard can it be? I'm told, I've got to undo them two screws, remove the pins, be a big nut underneath, I've got to take off, and then I've got to pull it off somehow. Steve, our bosun here, reckons, oh, it'll just come off. I suspect it won't be that easy, but we'll find out. So, let's get going. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take two grub screws out here, which will release these two pins that will let um, get the blades off. And for reference, it's a six millimeter Allen key. I'm going to get an old screwdriver or to poke out the crud that's built up in the holes. I decided to do this today because it's nice and sunny. But it's freezing cold, it's like zero. Unfortunately, where the sun's come out, the frost has thawed, but it means it's dripping everywhere. So <laughs> if the camera blacks out, it's because the drips off the hull are getting to it. <coughs> God, okay, if you're using a cheap Allen key like this and you can't get enough purchase on it, get an ch equally cheap ring spanner. Hook it onto the Allen key like that and you can double your leverage. Of course a clever man might have squirted some penetrating fluid and all this. Perhaps I should do that. But that's the first bolt out. Clearly had a liberal coating of uh, of grease or something. It's very sticky. Yeah, that one's the same. <coughs> wonder which way these top tap out. Looks the same both sides, maybe it's just a straight pin. Um, I've got something to tap with, I need something to tap against now. Do it start. Okay, move surprisingly easily. Okay, pin with a cutout in, which is obviously where their grub screw goes up against. In very good condition, actually. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah, that's the same. OK, 
Okay, so far so good. Two prop loads. Is that going to focus? That's what I'm faced with. Hopefully that's just a lot of grease. Because I can't really see what's there. Okay, yeah. It's not grease, it's just crud, um, barnacles and stuff. And we've got a nut with a tab washer. So I need a bigger screwdriver, which I'll use as a drift just to flatten out the tag. Now I only have a collection of cheap old tools. And it'd be much better if I had nice tools. But if I had nice tools, I'd probably be a bit more precious about banging the end of it with a hammer. So. There are perks to having cheap old tools. <coughs> so far so good. Let's try and get a socket on it. Okay, okay it's a 13mm socket, which I didn't think it was, but there's just too much muck on it. But, uh, you get rid of the muck and it goes on. Let's see what happens now then. Okay, surprisingly easy. Probably because it's surprisingly hard to hold it tight. Okay, it's the next day. I had a problem because I didn't have the right size socket for that and the camera went flat and then I've got the right size socket and I thought I'll try it and I've undone it all without filming it. So you didn't see that, but I'll show you what I've got. So you saw we take the little nut out of the middle of the, uh, the, pro the uh, prop hub which had the lock nut on it. Behind that, there's a big nut which was 22 mil and I didn't have a 22 mil socket but I got one now that went in there and you undo that that big nut and then this just slides off really well greased on mine um, anyway that's the prop off now I'm going to clean it up and then we can put it all back on, which I guess is just the reverse of what we've just done. So, um, back home now. Okay, quick question for you YouTube viewers. I took this sheave block out of there uh, a few weeks ago to get a new one. Um, it's a seldom part. It is an absolute nightmare to work out what you want. Seldom very gratefully show you all the different sheave blocks they make, but they don't give you any mention of hole sizes, sheave sizes, slot sizes, any idea of what you want. And you go to their website and try and call them and it says, call one of our dealers. So you call their dealers and they go, it's a nightmare getting sheave boxes from Seldon. And they end up taking the details and trying to get hold of Seldon and they don't get any information. In the end, I went to Pirate's Cave, our local Chandler, on the off chance, who did the same thing, got out the Seldon book, didn't have any information, but they took um, some dimensions off what I got, and it took them like two weeks, but they got the information, and they've ordered me a block, a block which apparently was in stock, but I've been waiting now two weeks for it and I haven't got, um, but then it is Christmas, so maybe we can, can forgive them that. Um, but anyway, it's coming, hopefully it's the same as this one, and as much as on one hand I didn't want the same one because this one failed, at the same time I don't want to have to change, drill new holes or change that slot. And I bought an Allen one which was almost the same but was slightly narrower um, because I could find the dimensions for that. And I knew it was going to be a narrow and I thought well I'll see what it looks like. Um, and I got it cheap, it was like 9 quid as opposed to the 40 quid I'm paying for the Seldon block. And it's basically exactly the same. But if you held them next to each other you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference other than the fact that this one's 2mm thicker. Anyway, I won't moan about Selden anymore, 
about the ridiculous price of their block and how long it's taken to get and how hard it is to find the right one. Because they are actually quite good. Let's face it, this master's been up for 20 something years and it's only just failed. So, um, But my question is, I've got to put a new one in here and I'm worried about galvanic corrosion and what it might do. Now this is kind of like an alley casting and the mast is aluminium and if I use model rivets, possibly I could just put it all together and it'd be fine. But is that the right thing to do? I could use that yellow paste, can't remember what it's called, du Dulac or something like that, but that's horrible and messy. And I know people do use silicon, but I'm not sure I really want to put something that um, is squidgy and would naturally um, provide a kind of a cushion, if you like, on something that has high loads on it, like this jib halyard sheave box, because I don't want it moving, I want it riveted on a fixed solid. So, so I don't know what to do. So if you've got any ideas, please leave a comment and um, let me know your thoughts. Cheers. So, got the propeller off, going to try to clean it up. In the past I've done this, uh, or the one other occasion I did this, I did this with one of those flat wheels that had kind of got like, um, uh, you know, emery paper or whatever on, on, a, on a rotary wheel. And it did a good job of getting this kind of build up of, I don't know what you call that, kind of patina, but it's a you know, thick layer of crud sort of stuff built up on it. Um, it did a good job getting it off, but it was almost too aggressive. So this time I thought I'd try um, a buffing wheel I've got, um, which I bought actually for doing the same propeller, for putting the precious shine on it. Because one of the wheels, this one, it's quite a hard, kind of aggressive wheel. So um, I thought I'd try that and see if that um, takes that layer off. Um, as you can see in the high-tech way I do things, I bought a cheap kit off of eBay for like a tenner that came with like three mops, and a few different waxes or whatever to polish with. Um, I use a very old Black & Decker drill. It's probably 30 years old if it's a day. And I stick it in my very old Black & Decker workmate and then uh, away we go. See how we get on. As you probably saw, that drill doesn't have a lock, so I rely on the fact that the vice clamps the drill so tight the trigger won't go off. She's not really good engineering, is it? But anyway, it's doing the job. I've got two blades and that big hub to do. And that hub, this hub, oh, weighs a ton. If you're into building racing boats, you certainly want to find a lighter weight propeller. <clears throat> anyway, I'm not going to film all this because it'll go on forever. I'll show you when I got to the end. Found a better wheel in the end, in the box. I should have looked, shouldn't I? There was a kind of a coarser white one, um, which got most of it off, but couldn't get these, it was struggling to get some little bobs, bits and bobs off. So in the end, I used some 120 grit wet and dry which hasn't really scored it that much, and that will polish out, I'm hoping. Um, but it got them bit, bits off, so I'm wondering whether I'd have been better off just using the wet and dry in the first place. I'll try it with the other one, see how I get on. I've got the wet and dry wrapped around a bit of old blue foam, so it's kind of cushioned and moulds itself to the shape. Probably shouldn't be doing it next to the electric, should I? Anyway, don't know how much you can see of that. It's coming off. Good, isn't it? That's just 120 grit wet and dry. And it was definitely better going all at it with the wet and dry than it was with the wheel. Um, probably, probably half the time, to be honest. But I'm going to get back on the wheel now and give them a polish. 
I'm not really looking for showroom as new condition, but you know, looks nice. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going for showroom condition, but the polishing was doing such a good job, you could see all the scratches from the 8 grit wet and dry, so, or the 120 wet and dry, so I've got some 400, I can't be asked to go any lower in that, but I'm going to go over it with that, get a bit more of a shine on it, tart and I. So I buffed the blades up, they come up really well. So I'm now doing the um, hub, is that the right word? Wet and dry is definitely the way to go. It's quick, it's easy, it's no problem at all. If you wanted to go the whole way, you'd probably go down to say a thousand grit, but the 400 grit I did on the blades with a polishing mop, fine for something that's gonna go in the water and never be seen again. So there we go. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Not sure uh, Hannah would appreciate it like I appreciate it, but kind of wants to go on the mantelpiece now until it goes back on the boat, doesn't it? I'm not going to fit it back on the boat because I've got to anti foul it and stuff, and uh, it'd be a shame, wouldn't it, to get it all mucky? Um, but anyway, if you've got an old propeller you want to clean up, um, or a flexifold propeller you want to take off the boat, it ain't that hard. Um, uh, it's worth doing. Not sure if that was ever on the list, to be honest. Taking the propeller off was definitely on the list because I need to replace that zinc, but I haven't replaced that zinc, so I can't tick that off. Not sure cleaning the propeller was actually part of this, but yeah, you know, jobs get added, don't they? Anyway, I'm Ian, and this is Sailing with the Foxwell family. Thanks for watching. All right. <coughs>
So of course it's been sitting there I suspect with water in it. So as I've started, I've drilled out the rivets from here to try and get that end off because the thing wouldn't just slide apart. And there's some corroded holes opened up in here where obviously it's just been with water. I don't know if it's galvanic corrosion from the steel or where it is, but basically it's all rotten. And I just could not, how much banging that I could do, get it apart. I drilled a hole in the bottom because I thought I would um, I would be able to you know, get something in there and maybe lever the, the, the plate which is about up here somewhere, move it, um, but I couldn't. Turns out there's a gas strut already in there, not sure that's quite the same place as the one I was going to fit was, but I've drilled into the gas strut that was there. Um, but again, that has corroded and, you know, it's probably a steel casing on this aluminium thing, it's fused in there. Just cannot get it out. The wire, of course, that runs down the middle is effectively holding the bits together so it's not like you can separate one bit from the other and then bang it out it's, they're all locked together so there's nothing I can do with it so it's not a problem I'll put it back as it was and we'll put up with the fact that the boom swings around at about this height and could take your head off um, but it's the right pain what I'd really love to do is put a Barton, a Barton one on because they're British they're just down the road from us and they do one that's effectively just a bent uses a, like a bent fiberglass pole so there's, there's no gas that's going to leak out or whatever. It's fitted, it's on, it'll work. But the trouble is, that's 250 quid or something. But it, you also need the kicker to go with that. This has the kind of kicker bit built into it, and I've got the bits for it. So then I've got to re-rope the kicker. I'm going to end up spending a lot of money just to keep the boom just above head height. And Hannah wants cushions, which we don't really need cushions. But Hannah wants cushions. So I don't suppose we're going to be doing this now, which is a bit of a pain. Pirates Cave were brilliant and took back the gas strut, um, even though it was ordered in special. They never questioned it. They gave me some vouchers. It's not a problem because I've got anti-fouling to pay for and goodness knows what else. So um, big thumbs up to Pirates Cave. Bit of a, I like Selden. They do good stuff. But if you don't sort this sort of thing out, Selden, you know, can't buy a sheave block. This thing doesn't work. You know, your market's going to be diminishing. So... Anyway, I've got to crack on.